Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good Tuesday morning, I'm Molly Hendrickson. And I'm Brian Sanders with the latest from Denver 7. The avalanche risk remains at a dangerous level this morning in the Colorado High Country. Two more avalanches happened yesterday, including this one near Officers Gulch along I-70 between Frisco and Copper Mountain. That is the same area where this avalanche buried several cars along I-70 on Sunday. In fact, Denver 7 spoke to the family who recorded the video of this as it happened from inside their truck. And like most of us who watched it, they didn't know how to react. The moment that I saw it, at first I was thinking, you know, how, how, how big is this? Is this going to actually hit us or not? I immediately started thinking, can I, can I outrun it? Do I need to hit the brakes? You know, what, what, what am I going to do? And I... Fortunately, everybody was okay, and we do have some tips on what to do if you find yourself in a similar situation right now at the DenverChannel.com. One that we found interesting was to turn off your vehicle, and you might think that you need it for the heat, but if you're covered in snow, this could put you at risk for carbon monoxide poisoning. You'll also want to consider an emergency kit in your car before you travel to the high country next and have blankets to keep you warm. Today, both sides will dig into the debate over oil and gas regulations. Democrats want to move forward on the most sweeping oil and gas regulation reform our state has seen, but Republicans feel this is a rush job and they want to delay today's hearing. Denver 7's Nicole Brady walks us through this plan. A Senate Bill 181 has major implications for our state's oil and gas industry. For one thing, it gives more control to local governments to regulate the industry. Currently, the state regulates oil and gas development. This bill would give local governments government's authority over the location of new wells, also allow them to impose fines for spills or pollution. Another piece of this bill is that it directs the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission to prioritize health and safety and the environment when considering oil and gas permits. House Speaker Democrat Casey Becker, who's co-sponsoring the bill, says the oil and gas industry will get its chance to weigh in. You know, we did not show the bill to industry beforehand, but we talked about concepts and certainly welcomed all their idea, you know, said provide us with ideas um, and they provided a few and I think they're going to be providing a lot more in the next few days. <laughs> This bill will have its first hearing today in the Senate Transportation and Energy Committee. This is just the first of several hearings to come. We also expect there to be dueling rallies from opponents and supporters of the bill happening here at the state capitol before that meeting at 2 p.m. today. At the state capitol, Nicole Brady, Denver 7. Nicole, thank you. We are following up with a new perspective after our 360 reporting last night at 10 on the death penalty. Today, sponsors of a bill to repeal the death penalty will take our questions. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn explains this is not simply a Republican versus Democrat issue. Yeah, the death penalty is certainly one of those contentious issues that continues to stir a heated debate. Here's a quick history of the death penalty in our state. The first man executed was John Stoffel way back in 1859. He was hanged just three days after killing his brother-in-law. Fast forward to 1934 and Colorado becomes the second state in the nation to adopt the gas chamber as its execution method. In 1966, voters say no, defeating a ballot measure to abolish the death penalty. Penalty. In 1997, Gary Lee Davis was the last man executed in Colorado for kidnapping, raping, and murdering his neighbor. And now this new movement to abolish the death penalty, which is opposed by some prominent Democrats, including Rhonda Fields, whose son was murdered in 2005. So I sat through every single trial for those three defendants. And on each trial, they, were, they came back with a, a guilty verdict. Guilty, 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 all three times. And so I believe that there's some crimes that the death penalty is warranted. You certainly have a lot to say about this. Philip says we cannot call our country a civilized society while still having the death penalty. And Bill says I lived in Illinois when they had the death penalty and saw the murder rate explode once it was abolished. We'll continue to follow all of the developments on this, including a scheduled news conference over at the state capitol this afternoon. In Denver, Russell Haythorn. Denver 7. A lot more to come out of this. We have a Contact 7 consumer alert as you wake up this morning. As the popularity of essential oil diffusers increases, so too do warnings from vets about the dangers to our pets. The diffusers release essential oils into the air that make you inhale and come in contact with them. They can help with colds, flus, and sinus congestion, but vets say they don't mix well with cats specifically. Because they actually, actually expel 
micro droplets of the oil. And if your kitty gets into that material, that can then get onto their fur, they can groom it off themselves, that's where they can get into some problems. There are passive diffusers that evaporate oils into the air, which are safer for our pets. We want to point out cats actually lack an essential enzyme in their liver, putting them most at risk. Birds are also sensitive to oils, too, while dogs have a little bit more of a tolerance. Today, we expect to get an update on a park to honor a deputy killed in the line of duty. Deputy Zach Parrish was shot and killed on New Year's Eve in 2017 by a man in the midst of a mental health crisis. The deputy Zach S. Parrish III Memorial Park is being built right now next to Aspen View Academy in Castle Rock. The park will have a playground, trails, a field, and picnic shelters. Construction started back in October, and tonight Castle Rock City Council will get an update on the project. A very popular troll in Breckenridge will have a new home this spring. During a town meeting last night, Breckenridge town officials announced Isaac Hart Stone will be rebuilt on a piece of land right near the ice arena. The new location is right by the Illinois Gulch Trailhead. The town likes the spot because it's close to downtown and also public transit. Very convenient if you're in town, hop on the trolley, ride up to the ice rink, get off, go visit Isaac, and then come back down. In the summer and even in the winter, it's very walkable. Um, there's sidewalks on both sides. It's a nice walk. You can bike up there. Isaac Hartstone was removed from town in November after neighbors complained about too much foot traffic. The addition of Isaac the Troll will also give the town a chance to turn this social trail into an official one with year-round maintenance. We are still right in the thick of winter here in Colorado, but now is your time to prepare for next ski season. Overnight, the Icon Pass went on sale, giving you access to 38 resorts around the world, including five right here in Colorado, Winter Park, Copper Mountain, Eldora, Steamboat, and Aspen Snowmass. This year, prices went up, though. The full price Icon Pass now costs $949. The Icon Base Pass costs $649. You get $30 off both of those prices if you renew your pass from last year. Year. Well, we have an inspiring Contact 7 story this morning after a cancer survivor's prized snowboard was stolen while he was trying to give back. Michael Burek was teaching fellow survivors how to snowboard last weekend in Loveland. They went into the lodge to take a picture and when they returned, the board was gone. So his family reached out to Contact 7 and we contacted the company that made the snowboard and they agreed to donate a new custom board. Hi. Yeah. How you doing? Good. I'm Tom Mustin. Nice to Tom, meet you. Tom, nice to meet you. Got a little present for you here. Hey, hey, See what you think. That. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Does it look familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely well deserved there. And to top it all off, Loveland donated new bindings and four ski passes. All the fixins and still some good snow to take advantage of, Lisa. Oh, that is cool. And yeah, we're looking at, you can see here from Loveland Ski Area, we'll give them a nice shout out this morning. Blue skies, it is perfect. As you get up to the top there at Chet's Dream, we've got some calm winds and we're looking at a pretty dry day statewide. Now here in town this morning, not nearly as cold as what we saw yesterday at the same time. And we're going to be in for a decent warm up. We hit a high of just 15 yesterday. We're likely going to be there by about 9 o'clock this morning. And then we'll more than double it uh, by this afternoon. Some low to mid-30s for highs today. Denver right around 32 to about 35 under a little mix of sun and clouds. So it's going to be a nice Tuesday. Still well below normal, but at least warmer than yesterday. Congress Park 35, Centennial 36, and in Brighton 32. Now as you get up across the northern plains closer to Fort Collins, uh, with this next round of snow that's going to hit the mountain starting tonight, we could see a few of those light snow showers move over northern Colorado, closer to Loveland, Longmont, Fort Collins on Wednesday. We're going to see an increase in clouds here in town. It is going to get warmer, though, 40s on Wednesday. And then you guys look at the end of the week, 50s Thursday, Friday. Tracking another cold front, that could bring more snow late Friday into Saturday. And it's going to get colder as we head into the weekend. Hey, those 50s will feel nice while we have them, though. All right, no. thanks, Lisa. Well, from the Golden Dome to potentially a seat in the White House, former Governor John Hickenlooper has entered the the crowded 2020 presidential race. That is certainly correct. Hickton Looper has been very busy with interviews since his announcement yesterday, but then this morning he stopped by our studio to answer a few questions. Thank you so much for being here. I, I know it's been a whirlwind 24 hours for you, and you were on the fence for a little bit about whether to run or not. What do you feel like was the tipping point for you? Well, you have to spend a lot of time with your family, but also go around the country and really it's, got, it's almost like taking the temperature of the country and see if there's a, an appetite for someone like myself that maybe isn't as strident uh, or as, as, you know, as, as, as liberal, some would say, mm -hmm. uh, 
But I really, you know, I'm someone who's prided myself on the ability to, you know, in Colorado, we could get people together and get things done, right? Find compromise, move forward. Okay. And I think there is an appetite around the country. And once, you know, at a certain point, there's no, there's no math, there's no calculus. You just decide, yeah, that's it. We're ready to go. Go time. All right, so the Democratic field, it is crowded. Is there, much like we saw with the Republicans four years ago, is there any concern about one standing out in the crowded field and also kind of having to go after some of your Democratic uh, contenders? You know, I, I ran two campaigns to be mayor, two campaigns to be governor, and I've been positive. I've been run a positive campaign every time. I'm going to run a positive campaign this time. So I'm I'm not going to go after any of my competitors. Mm -hmm. I respect them all. They're all different. Uh, there's great strength in the diversity of the field. I think it shows a lot about not just Democrats, but about America. But I, you know, I look at it, I'm the person that has again and again been able to bring people together. We've got almost universal health care coverage in Colorado. We brought the environmentalists together with the industry to get methane regulations. Uh, when you step back, and we, when I got elected, we were 40th in job creation. Now we've got the number one economy in the country. I mean, how we did that, how we got people together, I think is really a, a powerful lesson for the rest of the country. Speaking of bringing people together, uh, might your strategy in include a unique approach in combining with a, a Republican in Ohio Governor John Kasich? Well, I love John Kasich. I mean, I admire him tremendously. But no, I wouldn't run with John Kasich. Uh, I think we, together, we work to save, to make sure people with pre-existing conditions could keep their health care, right? We've really fought hard to to protect the expansion of Medicaid, the, all the people that got coverage before. Uh, but he and I disagree on so many things. Uh, we respect each other, but we're not going to run together. Right. All right. Well, we know you have a campaign event this Thursday at Civic Center Park before you head off uh, to campaign in Iowa. So what will your message be? Well, the campaign event, you know, at, at 5 o'clock on Thursday in the old Greek theater uh, in Civic Center, so between City Hall and the state capitol, we're going to have kind of a massive rally and send off uh, Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats, one of our local bands, is going to come play a few songs. Such nice. another great talent is going to come sing, sing a few songs. Uh, and my message really is that this is, we are in a national crisis, a crisis of division. And I think we've got to look past these elections even and see what, after the election, how do we come together and address these issues like, you know, the, the workplace disruption that's going to come from automation and, and you know, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. How are we going to deal with climate change in some of the ways we have here in Colorado? but on a global scale. Right. And that's, that's the key thing that I think I can bring is being able to bring people together after the election. Yeah. And after the rally, it's off to Iowa and, and off you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. I love that I'm excited by the notion of being able to go to Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, and Nevada, those early states. They're all so different, but they're also American. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. All right, well, this has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Check back here later today for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts.